Ronda is a very old town in Spain. Human bones have been found which date back to prehistoric days. The area is well known for the gorge that divides the town and is 98 metres deep. One side is the old part of town and the other is where modern development is taking place. There are three bridges over the gorge and this one, called the New Bridge, is actually quite old as it was opened in 1793 after taking 42 years to build and costing the lives of 50 workmen. Between the central arch and the road above are many rooms which were used as a prison. The window and balcony are still there. During the Spanish Civil War in 1936, both sides used the prison as a torture chamber for prisoners of war, and it's claimed that many prisoners met their death by being flung from the balcony to the gorge below. Many properties have a balcony or a patio that are perched on the edge of the gorge. A few cafes have tables available only a few feet from the drop. Tourists are allowed to use these platforms to view the gorge. At this location, it is said that Ernest Hemingway, the American author, drew inspiration for his novel, For Whom the Bell Tolls, partly because of a massacre that took place here during the Civil War. Approximately 500 fascists were murdered by the communists who threw them into the gorge while they were still alive. It's thirsty work walking the back streets of Ronda and a visit to this wine museum is very welcome, especially when visitors can drink the wine and eat the food. Uh, it was a German prince, Alfonso von Hohenlo, with friends who started to produce wine over here in this region of Romba, which is red wine and white wine, yes? And, and, uh, but the production is still very low, yes? It's not well known, neither in Spain as in the rest of Europe. And there you see some uh, taps where you can try the wine rosé. So I don't know which one is what. <laughs> you open one. It's, it's not water, yes? But it is red and rosé, I think. But surprise, surprise, you will see, yes? Old wine machinery is on view, like this wine press made to crush the grape, and this pump made to decanter wine from one container to another. Wine was first produced in this region over 6,000 years ago. The tour party is now on its way to the St. John Bosco home. The property was given to the Silesian Brotherhood by the local wealthy Grandio family at the beginning of the 20th century as a refuge for ill and retired clergymen. At the moment there are five inmates. As one would expect, many fine religious paintings are displayed throughout the house.
John Bosco was an Italian priest who founded the Silesian Brotherhood in Turin during the 19th century. He wanted to educate orphaned and deprived young boys. Later young girls were included. The Brotherhood opened branches throughout the world, including one here in Ronda. John Bosco and his dreams met opposition from many Italian leaders who believed that educating young deprived children would foment revolution. Even the clergy were doubtful, as many thought that Bosco would take away young future worshippers from their parish. Although Bosco was investigated, no charges were made. Many believe this was because the Italian king, as well as the Pope, insisted that Bosco be given the go-ahead. Saint Bosco is now the patron saint of magicians. As can be seen, both resident and visitor alike can enjoy a magnificent view from the garden of this quiet retreat. The Ronde Bull Ring was opened in 1784, making it the second oldest in Spain, the oldest being at Seville. The American, multi-talented Orson Welles was a great devotee of the bullfight and in his will he wanted his ashes to be scattered at the Ronda Bullring. The local council, however, would not allow this to take place, so his remains were interred at a nearby ranch owned by his close friend Antonio Ordine, himself a very famous bullfighter in the 1950s. These horses don't seem to have much room to move about as they are tethered very close to the wall. The Spanish are not very caring towards animals, but to their credit you very rarely hear of a child abuse in Spain. The part of the building is a museum and with the aid of photos and posters tells the story of the bullfight. These spectacular costumes are the originals worn by famous matadors and other participants of the fight against the bull. Bullfighting in its earliest form began in 1572 when King Philip formed a cavalry regiment at Ronda and a part of their training was to spear bulls while charging on horseback. It wasn't long before civilians took up this activity. One bullfighter, Francisco Romero, thought fighting on horseback was unfair so he got down from his mount and confronted the bull on foot. This new form of bullfighting rapidly became very popular and soon became the standard and has remained so to this day. Bullfighting at Ronda is no longer a regular attraction and only takes place once a year during the Festival of Goya which is held the first two weeks of September. At this time the local population parade in elaborate costumes and ride in vintage horse-drawn carriages. The bullfight is part of the culture of Spain, and you either love it or you hate it. 
The devotees will tell you it's like an artistic ballet. Other people will explain that it's nothing less than a barbaric ritual killing. Well, this is not the time to dwell on the matter, so we'll leave Rhonda and hope to return to look at the many historic places we haven't had time to visit today. <laughs>